Good evening, Kansas State University students, faculty, and staff, and special guests. Welcome to the 2018 New Student Convocation. My name is Dr. Stephen Smethers. I'm the Associate Director of the A.Q. Miller School of Journalism and Mass Communications in the College of Arts and Sciences. It's my pleasure to introduce my faculty colleagues, Paul Hunt, James Johnson, Jacqueline fassler kerstetter Stephen Maxwell, and Craig Parker. They're the Kansas State University Faculty Brass Quintet. Let's give them a listen.
Let's give the faculty brass quintet a big round of applause. stand and welcome President Richard B. Myers and members of the President's Cabinet, Provost and Executive Vice President Charles Tabor and members of the Council of Deans, Student Governing Association President Jordan Keel, Vice President Lacey Pitts, and our distinguished faculty, student, and alumni speakers. The University Mace, designed by alumnus Tom Boley, is posted by K-State's currently longest serving dean, Dr. Lori Getch of the University Libraries. May we please have a round of applause, by the way, for Mr. Terry Ferguson on bagpipes. Please remain standing for the presentation of the colors by the K-State Air Force and RO Army ROTC, led by Cadet Hancock, and the national anthem with lead vocalist Lauren Taylor. Oh, 
say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight were the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land all free And the home of the brave <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. K-Staters, will you please join me in welcoming the 14th president of Kansas State University, General Richard B. Myers, United States Air Force retired, and Dr. Charles Tabor, provost and executive vice president. Well, thank you, Dr. Smethers. It's certainly an honor and a pleasure to serve alongside members of the Cabinet, the Dean's Council, the Students' Governing Association, just as it is an honor to be with all of you today, our newest students. Give yourselves a round of applause. You're why we're here. As I recall from my own student days, the beginning of the fall semester, is a time of great excitement. But do you know what else will be a time of excitement? It's when you're back here in this building a few years from now, surrounded by family and friends, celebrating your graduation from Kansas State University. That's what today's convocation is about. We want you to start at K-State with a vision of your goal, but not just a vision, a practical and clear-eyed plan. How are you going to learn as much as possible? How are you going to empower yourself so that you can lead and serve? How are you going to engage with a wealth of resources, manage your time, and successfully negotiate challenges? How are you going to progress so that you can wind up right back here in a few years, not as our newest students as you are today, but as our newest alumni? I graduated from Kansas State in 1965 with a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering. Obviously, much has changed since then. Just look around at all the new buildings. But what hasn't changed one iota is our foundational commitment to the land-grant mission. We are committed to providing broad access to a first-rate university education for, for all who seek it, while also serving our state and the world through truly world-class research and outreach. That's the K-State mission. It is a mission that values diversity. And a land-grant mission is, at its heart, one that values inclusion. The K-State family is strong and proud. And with the addition of this entering class of students, you folks right here, we just became even stronger. And we couldn't be more proud of you. Provost Tabor, don't you agree? I absolutely do. Another reason why we're strong is because we enjoy outstanding senior leadership on all four of our campuses, Manhattan, Polytechnic, Olathe, and Global. And it is my pleasure now to introduce them. Would members of the President's Cabinet please stand as you're recognized. We welcome 
Gary Pratt, Chief Information Officer. Beth Montalone, Senior Associate Vice President for Research. Jeff Morris, Vice President for Communications and Marketing. Ethan Erickson, Assistant Vice President for Budget and Planning. Jay Stevens, Vice President for Human Capital Services. Gene Taylor, Director of Intercollegiate Athletics. Linda Cook, Chief of Staff and Director of Community Relations. Pat Bosco, Vice President for Student Life and Dean of Students. Brian Samuel, Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer. Amy Button Renz, President and CEO, Alumni Association. Now, would members of the Council of Deans and their, or their representatives please stand? We welcome Ernie Minton, Interim Dean, College of Agriculture. Lynn Iwanau, Associate Dean, College of Architecture, Planning and Design. Kevin Gwinner, Dean, College of Business. Darren Dawson, Dean, College of Engineering. John Buckwalter, Dean, College of Human Ecology. Debbie Mercer, Dean, College of Education. Allison Wheatley, Assistant Dean, College of Arts and Sciences. Carol Shanklin, Dean, Graduate School. Bonnie Rush, Interim Dean, College of Veterinary Medicine. Karen Peterson, Dean, Global Campus. Rebecca Studeville, Assistant Dean, Olathe Campus. Lori Getch, Dean, University Libraries and today's Mace Bearer. Mace Bearer. Interim CEO and Dean Alicia Starkey of K-State Polytechnic is presiding at the new student convocation on the Salina campus and sends her regards. Finally, I'd like to recognize 2018-19 student government president Jordan Keel and vice president Lacey Pitts. Thank you both for your leadership. As President Myers noted, Kansas State University is strong and proud, made even more so with the addition of you, our incoming freshman class. You bring a wealth and a diversity of experience, ideas, and aspirations. You have so much to contribute to our learning community. K-State is strong and proud, and it is also welcoming, as I have personally experienced. I have been invited to find my place here, and as you take up your place here as students, know that you are most welcome. Hello. Namaste. Hi. Hello. Ahlo sahlo. Marhaba. Bienvenidos. Konnichiwa. Hello. Goeiedag. Hello and welcome to K-State. We are glad you're here. You are welcome here in Manhattan, Kansas. The Little Apple. We care about you. We are here for you. For you. Because you are a part of our family. We are family. Somos familia. We are family. We are a big purple family. It's about the Wildcat Way. It's about education and research. It's about diversity. And no matter your country of origin, no matter your religion, no matter your visa status, no matter your race, your gender, or your sexual orientation. You. 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 You are welcome here. You are welcome here. 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 And here. You are welcome here at K-State. K-State에 오신 것을 환영합니다. Unade welcome to here, K-State. You are welcome here. Welcome to Kansas State University. Uh, I look forward to seeing you around campus. At this time, will you please welcome Dr. Gregory Eislein, professor and university distinguished teaching scholar from the Department of English and director of K-State First, the university's first year experience program. Thank you, welcome. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here today to welcome you to Kansas State. We are so glad you are here. I love this time of year because it's a time to start over. What matters right now is not what happened last year or even last week or in the past, 
What matters now is today and tomorrow and the rest of the school year. For you, our new students, this is especially true. When you wake up tomorrow for your first day of college, you're going to have this amazing chance to start over. You'll find that whatever you were in high school matters less now than what you have to do tomorrow and the next day and the rest of the school year. If you were pretty average academically, now is your chance to become a high achieving student. If you weren't very involved in high school, now is your chance to become a campus leader. If you, if you were a wallflower, now is your chance to become a social butterfly or vice versa. I can think of few other times in a person's life where they have like this moment, the start of college, where you were given such an amazing opportunity to remake yourselves. I say this because when you return here four years from now to receive your diploma, you'll be a different person. You may have the same color eyes and the same way of smiling, but you'll see the world differently and you'll think differently. For virtually everyone who walks the halls of, of this university and earns that degree, college is absolutely transformative. So it's, it's worth taking a few minutes now to think about what kind of person you want to be here on the eve of your college career. I also wanted to let you know what you'll be getting from your college experience. When you finish your studies, you will have a degree that brings a host of intellectual, economic, social, and personal benefits. The, the economic benefits are well known. People talk about them a lot. Lower rates of unemployment, higher incomes, better career mobility, and advancement, more career autonomy. The intellectual benefits of college are also well known. College grads have, have a greater knowledge, better critical thinking skills, more effective problem solving skills, especially when it comes to handling what they call wicked problems, complex, ambiguous problems, as well as a significantly improved ability to communicate and understand, including communication with those who are different from you. But what really matters to me is not just that you'll make more, you will, or that you know more, you will, but your core character will be strengthened and changed by your time at K-State. For example, when you leave here with your degree, your work ethic and your capacity for commitment will be powerfully strengthened. A college degree is hard to get. It's a significant, often demanding achievement. And everyone who earns that degree learns the value of hard work. When you leave here after dozens of classes about how the universe and our social worlds operate, you'll also have a heightened appreciation for the truth. You'll be less likely to accept mere opinions and more likely to be curious about the evidence. One of my favorite authors is Mark Twain, and he has this great quote where he says, it's wiser to find out than to suppose. One of the things you'll learn well at K-State is how to find out, which will make you far less dependent on other people's opinions and, or, or supposing. You're also going to learn what it's like to be part of one of the greatest extended families ever. When we call K-State a family, it, it means something. It means something very real. You're going to see that your K-State family is here for you now and with you after you graduate you'll realize that the support we provide each other is crucial to the learning that happens here and the successes that you're going to have during your college career. This element of family makes K-State a very, very special place to learn, and it will become an indelible part of who you are from now on. So, as you start your college career, take a moment to think about your families and extended families, those who helped you get here, and the new folks who are going to help you make it back here for graduation. You may have already started to meet some of these new wildcats, but please reach out to them today, tomorrow, next week, over the course of your first year here. I got some ideas about how you can do that. This first one is important. Make friends. Make friends with the students in your classes and in your residence halls. Join the study groups. 
Read our common read, The Hate You Give, and talk with others about the book and its ideas and the issues it raises. Share your perspectives and your responses with each other. Drop by your professor's office hours. We'd love to see you. Take part in what's happening on campus. And finally, and, and I think most importantly, help each other. Our student philanthropy, K-State Proud, has this great motto, Stu students helping students. This is what makes us distinctive. This is what makes K-State such an awesome place to study and to learn. Thank you and have a great first day. Now would you please welcome three returning students, Eddie Genovese, a member of the Mortar Board Senior Honor Society, Selena Hernandez, a member of the First Scholars Program, and Clara Wyckoff, a member of the University Honors Program. Good afternoon. My name is Eddie Genovese. I'm a senior here at K-State studying industrial engineering. I'm not a native Kansan, but I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed my time in Manhattan. I'm so excited to see you all sitting here today, beginning your K-State journey. This afternoon, I'd like to share some advice on how I think you can make the most of your time at Kansas State. First, I would urge you all to join one of our clubs or organizations. We have over 475 on campus, and they're a great way to make new friends, as well as set yourself up for a leader position in the future. Next, I'd like to say, if you need help in a class, ask for it. College can be hard, and no one ever said getting a degree is easy. K-State offers on-campus tutoring free of charge to all students, and I can't tell you how important it is to ask for that help if you need it. We have the resources for you all to be successful here, you just have to ask for it. And finally, my last piece of advice is not to blink. Your time at Kansas State will be over before you know it. Before I began my Kansas State journey, I was given the same advice. I was told time would fly. But despite this, I thought four years would last forever. Before you know it, you'll be sophomores, juniors, and then seniors. Make the most out of every day at college. Make time to go to football games, basketball games, meetings, and mixers. As Mark Twain once said, 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So make every day memorable. Remember to study hard, get involved on campus, and enjoy every day you have here, because if you blink, you might just miss it. Our next speaker is a junior here at Kansas State and part of our first scholars program, Selena Hernandez. Many kids grew up listening to their parents talk about their college days. And it was expected that someday they too would make college memories of their own. In my case, I wasn't the first one in my family to decide to go to college. I was the first one who had the opportunity. My parents weren't able to continue in their education. And because I'm the eldest, I have always wanted to set an example for my younger sister. I wanted to prove that it's never too late nor too early to think about pursuing further education. As a first generation student at Kansas State University, I have been blessed with a welcoming environment that has only ever provided me with the resources and support for all of my academic endeavors. When I first came to K-State three years ago, I never imagined myself speaking at convocation, being a resident assistant, or a peer educator. But I stand here before you today to express that my greatest accomplishment has simply been attending K-State. With being a first-gen college student, I have the opportunity to inspire my family and hopefully allow this effect to snowball, snowball <laughs> towards inspiring other Hispanic youth and others who may come from unco unconventional circumstances. Our next speaker is Clara Wyckoff from the University Honors Program. Today I'm excited to speak with you 
about navigating the path to academic success and a college degree. American actor and comedian Milton Berle once said, if opportunity does not knock, build a door. The students who are most successful in their four years here at K-State spend their time building doors to better futures. Here's how to build your door to academic success at K-State. D, the D in door stands for diligence. Be diligent about your daily schedule. Getting your degree is your job for the next four years, and I challenge you to treat it like one. A safe rule of thumb is to set aside three hours of studying outside of class for each credit hour you are enrolled in. This may sound like a lot of time, but remember, getting your degree is your main job, and your daily schedule should reflect that. O, owner's equity. When you leave K-State, you will have put a significant amount of time and money into your degree. You own it, and you are responsible for the outcome. So go to class, take notes, and invest in yourself. O, the second O in door is opportunity costs. You will have the opportunity to invest your time and energy in many things here at K-State. As you evaluate each opportunity, ask yourself, will this experience help me meet the needs of my future employer and my future self? You cannot do everything, so make what you do count. R, the R in door stands for resources. And wow, does K-State have a lot. Your professors will be your greatest resource. So ask questions and do not be afraid to go to office hours. Faculty are a great resource not only for their knowledge, but also for internships and travel experiences. Other resources at K-State, such as mentoring, tutoring, library staff, and the Career Center, will also help you build your door to the future. So, to build your door to academic success at K-State, diligently plan your daily schedule, earn owner's equity in your degree, evaluate your opportunity costs, and use the many resources available. Then you will leave these doors with a college degree, a proud alumnus of Kansas State University. Go Wildcats! Fellow Wildcats, please welcome Megan McCall from the graduating class of 2008 and 2011 and one of two 2018 Distinguished Young Alumni Award recipients. Thanks. It is an honor to be here to share this evening with you. My time at K-State will forever be precious to me because it connected me to perspectives, opportunities, and relationships that changed my life. I came from a small western Kansas town, certain that I wanted to help others, but unsure of exactly the path that I would take to get there. I am incredibly grateful for the instructors, professors, and colleagues along the way who pushed me to think critically, to continually ask questions, particularly regarding questions, sorry, systems of oppression and inequality. I found my passion and I have been committed to anti-violence work for the past 12 years. I have three points of advice for success. Number one, step outside of your comfort zone, especially when it comes to listening to new perspectives, learning from people who are different from you. Number two, take care of yourself. We cannot pour from an empty cup. We all deserve support. It's okay to ask for help, and there are resources both on and off campus if you ever need it. And lastly, never stop asking questions. Use your voice. You can each be change makers. You've had the chance to listen to several perspectives on success, and each of you have your own unique dreams, talents, and potential. As you all embark on this new beginning, take a moment to consider, what is important to you? How will you make the most of your college experience to achieve those dreams and reach that potential? What will that look and feel like? And now I'd ask you all to turn to your neighbor and introduce yourself, but as your future self. Seriously, go on. Introduce your future self to your neighbor.
Thank you. Thank you. I look forward to meeting these future selves, the alumni that you will become. Thank you. Please welcome Bryce Hushka from the 2008 graduating class. He's a 2018 Alumni Association Distinguished Young Alumni Award recipient sharing his remarks with us during his travels. Today, he's in Estonia. Hey K-Staters, at an Airbnb in Riga, Latvia on month six of our learning and giving journey around the world, I wanted to share three questions from you, for, with you from a man named Rabbi Hillel 2,000 years ago and still extremely relevant to both of our journeys. The first is, if I am not for myself, then who will be for me? Your career is a business and you own it. You're about to invest 7,000 hours in college. Reimagine your student experience for what it really is. It's a startup experience and you IPO when you graduate. What employers like me care about is your difference factor. It's what you do that no one else is doing. So do interesting things. Get rare combinations of degrees. Start research your first semester. Go hang out with people that don't look or talk like you. The second question is, but if I am only for myself, who am I? You have to be selfish first, but everyone finds out that meaningful work comes from helping others. We ask students in China, what is YSG? Short for your social good. If you have the luxury of hearing this, then there's someone that has it worse than you. YSG is building a habit of giving back. For me, it started small with the watermelon bus philanthropy. And then it went to Meals on Wheels, American Cancer Society, inner city education, higher education, and global education with junior achievement. You can do the same. Just take the first step and give your time and eventually make YSG a part of your difference factor. Because employers like me, we want to hire more people that do good. And then the final question is, if not now, when? An acquaintance reached out to me two years ago for help finding a job. He was struggling and he had a 3.9 GPA. He had no difference factor. I could help him reword his resume, but I couldn't help him redo the last 7,000 hours. Don't be that guy. I was as busy as anyone exploring the new freedom that I had in college and of course, finding a date to the day party, which was difficult for me. Those things are important though. Have fun, make friends that will last forever, but you can never forget that you are running a career startup and you have a simple recipe now. Build your difference factor, find YSG and start now. That is the reason that I went on this trip and it's took taken me over the last six months to China, to Indonesia, to Russia and in between. I can't wait to see where it takes you. Good luck. And finally, to deliver a charge to you, the newest students at Kansas State University, please welcome Daryl Reese, past president of K-State's Black Student Union and currently a K-State student ambassador. All right. K-State, new students, make some noise, get excited. Yeah, man, nothing great can be accomplished without some enthusiasm. That's what you guys should have. So let me first say congratulations. You have closed one chapter in your life, but now it's time to open and embark on, on this next chapter. And this chapter is called college. You all have put in countless hours of hard work, studying, applying, and preparing for this moment right here and right now. Today you embark on this journey as a college student. But there's something even more special about this moment. Today, you are now a part of the K-State family. And here at K-State, we bleed purple. And our creed is embedded in our family because the love of the family is life's greatest blessing. Now I know that there are many emotions and feelings that you might be facing. 
I know that a lot of you are feeling excited, but I also know that some of you might be feeling nervous or anxious. And trust me, I know those feelings, and they're normal, because I once was in those seats having those same feelings. So let me encourage us all today. Each and every one of you are here at K-State for a reason. It didn't happen by accident that you chose to further your education at K-State. As I look out at all of you today, I see the next generation of students that will change this world. I see intelligent, talented, special, driven men and women. I see that your life has purpose. I see our future engineers, teachers, athletes, businessmen and women. But even though I see this in you, you have to see this in you as well, every single day. Remind yourself every day that I am a world changer, that I am special, that I am talented, and that I will get my education, and that I will graduate. Now, we can't deny the fact that times do get tough. When the material in class gets hard, or that test didn't go as planned, or even when you miss home. But don't quit, don't lose hope, and don't lose your faith. Persevere through the tough times because there's always joy on the other side. I want you all to look around because you each have a responsibility, not only to yourselves, but to each other. You are each responsible for your education, showing up to class on time, asking questions, getting help when you need it. But you are also responsible for each other, for your family, for this family. When they're down, you pick them up. And when they're doing great, you're right there cheering them on. Because none of us can go through this journey alone. So today, today is the first day of your exciting journey as a K-State student. So stay strong, embrace every day and every moment, because I promise you that these will be some of the best years of your life. So get excited, have fun, enjoy every day, because there is nothing like being a K-Stater. Go Cats. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please stand and join members of the School of Music, Theater, and Dance in singing the Kansas State University alma mater. And so, dear Wildcats, we look forward to seeing you again at this venue on many occasions, including for your own graduation ceremony in four years. Now, there's been a little change in plans. We were going to send you over to Bill Snyder Family Stadium for a pep rally and a cookout. As you know, it's raining. 
So we've, did the, we've done the bet, next best thing. We've brought the cookout and the pep rally to you. So, are you ready for some football? Go Cats! Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Kansas State University. My name is Frank Trace. This is the pride of Wildcat land. Now, this is a great university. It's just a great academic institution. Also a great football team, a great coach, great basketball team. Every athletic event is just a wonderful experience for you because it goes away very quickly. You turn into adults and you get a job and you get married and you have kids and then you die. 
So right now, we want to have a good time. And we're going to show you how to have a good time at football games the K-State way. There's a couple traditions we have here. The first tradition we have lately is that on game day, it rains. So here we go. It's there. Those of us who have been through that know that. The next tradition is this. We have a thing called Purple Haze, old Jimi Hendrix tune from the late 60s, early 70s. And we're going to play it for you right here. Blake's going to get the band horns up, and we're going to play Purple Haze. And you're going to take your fingers, and you're going to make a C and a W here, and you'll know what to do. Here we go. Purple Haze, two times, band, two times. At football games, when we play defense, we have a great defense. If there's a quarterback sack or there's a, a certain aggressive tackle, and as we do the aggressive tackling, we like to play this tune, and you'll figure out what this is all about, and you know what it is. It's eat em up, eat em up, KSU. Here we go. This is a very intimidating stadium to play in, as Coach Snyder will tell you about when he gets here. And one of the things we do for audience participation and get you involved is we want it to be loud when we're on defense. When we're on offense, we're going to be very quiet, and they're going to run their things and score lots of points. And then when they're on defense, when we're on defense, we're going to shut the offense down by us getting involved and giving that home field advantage, which is. And one of the things we do here is another old uh, Led Zeppelin tune. And this is where you could participate in the same way, and you'll know it. Here we go, Zepp. There you go. There you go. You got it. We have another tradition here, and I'm not going to pretend that I do this very well, but every time that we get a first down, you'll hear Dave Lewis say something like this. Pick up of 17 yards on a play, good for a first down. Now, come on. You're all high test score kids. Let's figure this out here, all right? Here we go. Ready? Pick up of 17 yards on a play, good for a There you go. You got it. You got it. And we score a lot of these. 55-yard pass in the end zone. Good for a Wildcat. I screwed that up. Let's try this again. Good for a touchdown. One more time. Hands go up in the air. Hands go up. Don't be mad at me. I'm just, I have to do this. Here we are. Ready? 
Here it is, ready? 55 yards on a scoring drive, good for a touchdown. There you go, you got it, you got it, you got it. Don't let the rain get you. We have a great alma mater, and we'd like you to sing along. And one of the traditions at the end of the game, win, lose, or draw, and it's always win, is we put our arms around each other and we sway and we sing the alma mater because we love this place. So here it comes, here comes the horns up. All right, we got a couple other cheers that we do that you can do what you want to. We can make some stuff up here, but Ben, can we play a little word up here? Are you ready? Here comes the horns up. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here we go. Give it up for the band. Yeah, I love it. All right, hello everyone. Um, my name is Zach Donnelly. This is my good friends Tori Thomas and Ethan Kallenberger. And we are your KCA Proud co-chairs for this next upcoming school year. Um, but first, a quick announcement. If you want to see the marching band, the classy cats, the cheerleaders at this year's football games, you've got to buy your athletic ticket. So it's really important. You can buy those today up on the concourse. It's pretty easy, so buy those. Some come support. Hi, Maggie. She's smiling at me. Um, come support your athletic teams here, um, but I'll give it off to Tori. 
All right, guys, tonight we have joining us the architect of the greatest turnaround in college football history. Over the past nine years, our Hall of Fame head coach has led us to over 73 wins, eight consecutive bowl games, averaging 8.1 wins per season, and a conference championship in 2012. Yeah. He's pretty incredible as a coach. He is the 26th coach in college football history to reach 200 wins in his career. And he is the sixth coach in history to do that at the same university the whole time. Please give a big K-State welcome to head coach Bill Snyder. Thank you very much. I think it's all right to start. Listen, I uh, can't tell you how much I admire each and every one of you. I, I, first and foremost, you made a wonderful choice. That tells me you're very, very bright young people. Kansas State University is a very, very special place. I think you have found out that to a certain degree, but there's more and certainly a great deal more uh, to truly find out. Wonderful people here, uh, wonderful student body, wonderful faculty, great administration. Uh, I have you know, such an amazing appreciation for, you know, the people that support our university as well as our football program. Our band is absolutely amazing, always has been. In my tenure here, uh, Frank Trace has done uh, just, uh, he and his staff have done an amazing job and these uh, young people that uh, you, will, you will be entertained by in many, many ways truly are special. And our, our cheerleading staff, uh, our uh, classy cats, uh, you know, Willie, I mean, the support people around us are uh, amazing, and I greatly appreciate them and appreciate their leadership as, uh, as well. I think you'll find, uh, as I indicated, you'll find a, a wonderful faculty, a faculty that genuinely cares about teaching you, they care about people. You know, I, I've said so many times, Kansas State University is about people who genuinely care about people and hopefully that you will fit into that and realize that in a very short period of time. And I'll tell you a quick story about when I first came to Kansas State, long before any of you were born, and it was in uh, 19, the winter of 1988, and a uh, long story leading up to it, but nevertheless, I was here and I was in this building. My very first day on this campus, I hadn't accepted the job uh, but we were here to talk about it, and uh, we had a meeting up here with uh, administration and faculty members, uh, supporters, some students, etc. And I asked them part way through if I could uh, have someone take me out onto our campus here and let me out and come back and get me in an hour's period of time. And it was uh, this is uh, late December and it is cold that's one thing we can't disguise in kansas it does get uh, a little nippy from time to time but it was it was cold out and they they did exactly that they didn't know why i wanted to do it but uh, as i was on the campus i found kind of a centralized location that they guided me to and i visited with just stop people uh, none of them who i knew none of them knew who i was or why i was why i was there and I asked questions about anything and everything that was important to me. I asked about our community. I asked about our faculty. I asked about our administration. I asked about our student body. I asked about the university as a whole and in general. And I asked about our athletic program and our football program. And I, after an a hour on campus, and I visited with, I'm guessing, uh, my guess is always around 65 to 70 people. And like I said, they had no clue who I was or why I was there. There were 
faculty members, there were students, there were staff members, there were people visiting the campus, people from all walks of life, as well as students. When I came back and, and we met, uh, John Weefald was the president at the time, and I said, Dr. Weefald, uh, after being on campus, I believe I'm very, very interested. I need to talk with my family, but uh, I'm, I'm quite interested in this position. And he said, well, why? What was the change of heart? Because I had originally uh, declined. And I, I told him the truth. You know, with all those people I visited with, I was so overly impressed. They, uh, they were very genuine. They were very kind. They were very gracious. They were amazingly friendly. Nobody got in a hurry. You know, and we're talking about it might have been it might have been 20 degrees, and I think you think about it, most people probably want to excuse themselves and don't want to be held up and want to get into the warmest building or the quickest uh, the route that they can. And, but nobody did that. You know, everybody stayed and answered the questions openly and honestly and engaged in conversation, and it just allowed me to understand, you know, that people truly here are genuine, they are caring, and they're the kind of people that I truly wanted to be associated with and involved with, and nothing has happened to change my opinion in the period of time that, uh, that I've been here. I remember the, uh, uh, one of the things that I hadn't been told and didn't know is that Kansas State University at that time had an average attendance at ball games of 13,000, and uh, the NC2A had a Oh, uh, a regulation, a rule that indicated that you had to have 19,000 average attendance at home games in order to be a Division I school. And Kansas State didn't have that. And we appealed to the student body, the fan base, everybody we could. Uh, the Board of Regents was discussing one of two options. One was to drop football, and the other one was to become a lower-level university football program. Our students responded. Our fan base responded. You know, we went above 19,000 the next year. We went above 30,000 the next year, and uh, ever since, or pretty close to every since, it's been sold out. And, and our student body was a big part of that. And it was... Uh, uh, when we first came to the student body, I don't know if you've been in the stadium or looked out at the stadium when you do, uh, the student body sat in the, uh, in the corner of the south uh, end zone, right uh, up against this building. And, and in other words, probably the worst seats in the house. And since we only had 13,000 in the stands to begin with, I went to the president and the athletic director and asked if they would move the student body up into better seating. And we moved them up to approximately the 30-yard line, and that's where you sit today. There is no university in this country that plays Division I football that has better seating for the student body than Kansas State does. And, you know, you're sitting in those high-dollar seats. And you get to sit in those high-dollar seats. I mean, those are those are hundred-plus-dollar seats. I think I'm not sure, but pretty close to that. And you get it for a lot less than that. But it is it is certainly worth it to us. And it was important to me because the student body is is really what makes up uh, any program. You know, our players are students, and obviously you're the ones that get out and support our program so very readily. And I, as I said, I do appreciate it. And and you have been. I say you, the student body, has been extremely, extremely instrumental in the kind of fan base that we have. You know, you've been, our student body has been a great fan base. I think we get somewhere in the vicinity of 9,000 in that seating area that we have. Uh, sometimes they stay all night uh, just waiting to be the first in, etc. cetera. Uh, you know, and I think back, I, one of the a story that I tell frequently that really defines that a number of years ago, uh, we played the University of Southern California in back-to-back -back games. We played out in the Coliseum that seats, what, 101,000, I think, and they filled it up, and 
uh, we won a very close ball game out there. Pete Carroll was the head football coach at the time. He's presently and an extremely talented football coach. And he's presently with, uh, what, Oakland Raiders. The next year, USC came back on this campus and we won a ball game rather handily. And after the ball game, Pete Carroll went on ESPN, national television, and he said, Kansas State University has the most intimidating crowd that we have ever, ever, ever played in front of in my history of coaching college football. I thought that was pretty special. You know, and what I appreciate so much is you know, the, and, and our, you have to understand this as well, the players in our program have a great appreciation for it. They talk about it all the time, about how our student body, you know, evokes the emotion during the course of a ball game for the rest of the fan base as well as, you know, for our players. You know, our, our student body and our cheerleaders and classic cats and our band make it a, an amazing environment in which to compete in front of. And I, I remember, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, one of the things, that, a statement that has been made on numerous occasions about Kansas State University and its fan base and being uh, loud and motivational and, as Pete Carroll said, intimidating. But I get, and, and this is a, a true statement, I get constantly get letters from opposing teams' fans who attend ball games here and they, they echo that same thought, you know, what, a, what an amazing fan base you have, an amazing student body you have, and how they get into ball games. But they all also make this statement, which I am so proud of, and they say, we are always, as loud as it gets, and as, uh, and as demonstrative as your students and your fans are, we are always treated with great respect. And that, those two things go hand in hand, and I appreciate our student body for, for doing that. And you know, we've, uh, Kansas State University, Kansas State University has the three largest crowds in the history, in the history of college football to cross the state line to watch their team play. You know, and we're a state of, uh, there are more people in Dallas-Fort Worth area than there are in the state of Kansas. So we are a small state, and consequently, you wouldn't think that we would travel as well as we do. But it's, it's because of you, it's because of our band and, and the cheer groups, and it's because people genuinely care. You know, and our, I, I, it goes back a ways, but uh, we played in the, uh, I'm trying to think which one, played in the Cotton Bowl a uh, number of years ago, and uh, I was trying to think who we played, maybe Tennessee. Uh, we had 45,000 fans. That was the largest crowd ever. And what you have to remember is, you know, when you have that many people going, the Cotton Bowl probably offered us maybe 10,000 tickets for our fans to buy. And somehow our fans came up with approximately 45,000 tickets. You know, that means they really, really, really wanted to be there. That's pretty special. The next year we went to uh, play Syracuse in the Fiesta Bowl, and we had approximately 50,000. Two years after that, we went back to play in the uh, Cotton Bowl. I think that was the uh, Tennessee year, and we had uh, in excess of 55,000. Those are the three largest crowds ever to cross the state line to watch their team play. You know, why does that happen? You know, that happens because we have a great fan base, we have a great student body, and, and, and they go to see the band sometimes as much as they do you know, the football program. So I, I just uh, can't share enough about how much I appreciate uh, everybody that is involved and the wonderful support that we have had. Um, uh, certainly, I, I do want to encourage you, you know, one thing before I, before I close. I mean, this is your first venture into Kansas State University, your first venture into, if I understand it correctly, into a college environment. And uh, it's, it's kind of like we talk with the young people in our football program. It really is about getting off to a great start. 
and I think what you will find, you, you, there's uh, an amazing faculty here, an amazing administration. Faculty genuinely cares about you. They want to interact with you. They want to work with you. They want to help you. You have to be open to that. But let me encourage you so many times. You've got a lot of things on your plate right now. You know, you probably can't wait to get out of here and get to Aggieville or whatever the case may be. But the point is, you know, it is really significant to get off in the classroom to a great start. You know, being in class, you know the, you know the story. Uh, there's a statistic that is out there that is really uh, alarming that uh, across our country, not at Kansas State, but across our country, that the uh, incoming class of any university on any year uh, is cut in half you know, before graduation. So it is, if that were to hold true here, that means one half of you would not be able to finish your education at Kansas State. Now, if indeed that statistic is true, then it tells me just one thing, because every one of you qualified to be here at Kansas State University. So it means you're bright young people, that you can be good students. The important thing to understand is, is getting off to the right start, you know, in the classroom and your studies. Too often we put things off, you know, and we say, okay, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it the next time, uh, the next day, et cetera. But let me, let me just encourage you, you don't need somebody preaching to you, I get that, you get that at home all the time. But uh, please think about that, you know, and when you get yourself off to a great start, you know, finishing up becomes uh, a lot easier for you, and consequently, you get a chance to stay on and finish your education, get a degree, and go on and have a great life. And we have taken way too much of your time. I appreciate each and every one of you. I wish you the, the best of good fortune while you're here at Kansas State University and come and watch the Wildcats play. Thank you very much. All right, before you leave, ladies and gentlemen, we've got three more traditions that de do not need an explanation or an introduction, other than the fact that this handsome young cat's going to come up in front and give you the first one.
out there. Good job, guys. <laughs> All right, so before you go, we want to tell you a little bit about, about K-State Proud. So K-State Proud is K-State's biggest student-led philanthropy. And our motto is students helping students. So in the past 12 years, we've raised over $1.2 million um, and helped over 600 students stay at K-State. So these lovely t-shirts you see right here, you can actually donate $20 and all of that money goes back to helping students stay at K-State. And you can actually pick the logo for this upcoming year's shirt. Yeah, so like Tori, Tori said, right now we're in the middle of the 2019 K-State Proud Logo Contest. Tonight on the screens around the Coliseum and out on the concourse, you will see the five finalists for the K-State Proud Logo. The way voting works this year, it's going to be a social media contest on Twitter and on Instagram. So if you see our accounts on Twitter, a retweet is two votes and a like is one vote. On Instagram, a like is one vote. We'll wrap up voting in two weeks, and then in a month when we play Texas, we'll have our K-State Proud tailgate and our K-State Proud football game where the new logo will be revealed. So those are some really exciting things to look forward to in the next month, and make sure to vote so you can pick what this year's t-shirt looks like. Okay, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Let's give everyone a round of applause real quick. All right, so before you go, let's keep the party rolling. We got some few t-shirts we're gonna throw out. Who wants a free t-shirt? Yeah? Yeah, let's go. All right, all right. Okay, so I bet you guys are hungry right now. So in just a few seconds, you guys can head on up to the concourse to get some food. I'm gonna ask that everyone on the floor here goes up to the west side to get your food. Then everyone in the stands go to the east. But again, thank you guys so much for coming. Have a great day, a first class tomorrow. Go vote for the logo and go Cats. Thanks guys.